Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I wanted to go ahead and do my June book wrap up. So this month for me was not a really productive reading month I'd say. It wasn't terrible but it could have been worse um, or better. <laughs> I ended up reading four audiobooks, seven fiction uh, novels and then two comics slash graphic novels. So yeah and a lot of these I've already done book reviews on so I will go ahead and link them in the down bar and I'll give you a very very brief idea of what they're about. So the first book I read this month was Furthermore by Tarifa Mafi, and this is a book that I ended up giving four out of five stars. I listened to it in audio format, um, and it's a middle grade, borderline YA fantasy adventure novel with a young female protagonist who questions the um, male adults and also children in her life which is something that you don't really see often in middle grades and it can be really affirming and a powerful message for young children so if that sounds interesting to you check out the review in the down bar and then i read the supremes at earl's all you can eat by edward kelsey moore this is a book and series that follows three best friends. It follows the female friendship across their lifetimes. So they're still alive by the end of the novel, but they start off as children. And then it also just goes across life sorrows and joys, and it's a very funny novel um, with very lovable characters. And if you are intrigued by the first one, the second one's just come out this June, and that's called The Supremes sing the heartache blues. Uh, Dee Dee let me know that it was out and I'll link her channel in the down bar as well. And that one I gave three out of five stars. It was really good. So then I read I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This one I gave three out of five stars. I was going to give it four out of five stars but I changed my mind. And here we see twins, a story about twins, of coming of age, of coping with grief and kind of trying to make one's place in the world. There's a lot of trigger warnings in this book uh, for sexual abuse, drug abuse, and all these different things. So be aware of that. And the review for this one's going to be in the down bar as well. Then I read Eggshells by Katarona Lely. And this I gave four out of five stars. And this follows the effects of isolation, of feelings of alienation, a protagonist who has a fixation with words and the meanings of words. And it's an interesting study too on defining reality for a character and for those who are around that character. So then I read a comic, Giant Days, by John Allison, written by John Allison, illustrated by Lisa Trayman, and colored by Whitney Coger. Um, and this was the first volume of Giant Days, which is a very campus style comic. It follows three best friends on their first year of college and it kind of just goes over those misadventures that one might have especially in American University. I gave it two out of five stars. I'm going to do a grouped comic slash raffle novel review where I'll talk about it a little bit more but if that sounds interesting be aware that there will be a review sometime soon. And then I read a novel called A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. I really liked this novel. I gave it five out of five stars. It's one where I couldn't attach to the characters, but what the novel was doing and covering was something that I thought was really interesting and important. It uses comedy as a medium for storytelling and truth saying, and also comedy as something that can be very revelational like you can see people's prejudices through what they found funny and yeah for more see the roots. then i listened to an audio format the smell of other people's houses by bonnie sue hitchcock and this follows a rural community in alaska multiple teenagers perspectives so it's very much a coming of age story but because you're following i believe at least four or five different perspectives, you kind of see a coming of age in an Alaskan setting across different socioeconomic classes as well as across different communities because there's a strong, um, there's one character who's Native American, so there's that aspect as well. And it also covers kind of an intersection of all these perspectives, so intermingling 
uh, that which you know with the quote unquote other. So yeah, I enjoyed that. I gave it three out of five stars. I would say that I preferred the title to the whole novel, but that's another story in itself. <laughs> And then I read A Stranger in Oladaria, I can never say this right, by Sophia Samatar. I ended up giving this four out of five stars. There's a review, it's a fantasy that features people of color. Uh, it is very poetic in writing style. It's very slow moving, but it has political stru struggles within it, a feeling of mythicism. And our main protagonist, Javik, has a fixation with the written word and with reading because that is something that is not within his original culture. So there's also that fascination of learning and experiencing things for the first time. Then I read a graphic novel called Beautiful Darkness and I neglected to make a note of who it's by. I believe the authors are French, but anyway, I'm going to include their names here in the screen. Um, I gave this two out of five stars. Uh, I found the art style to be extremely beautiful. However, it was a vulgar, morbid, ruthless, and honest glimpse into what humans are capable of and that very raw brutality that we can have but it is extremely triggering immediately the novel starts off essentially the novel follows these little sub identities of this little girl who was murdered brutally in a forest and they come out of her rotting body and yeah so it follows that and i mean it's triggering as as all hell so two out of five stars for me maybe for you it would work out well but not for me and i listened to the cutting season by attica Locke, and this was really 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 well done i'm going to do a separate review on this as well um attica lock is the writer for empire and in this we have a mystery novel that is also a study of a place and of a history of a place specifically in louisiana on a plantation and the characters feel very lived in and true and real and it's just awesome four out of five stars there will be a review which is why I'm not talking about it at length and then I listened to another audiobook called when we rise my life in the movement by Cleve Joins and this was a very poignant novel for me especially as somebody who's part of the queer community i found it to be informative i am not as educated as i would like to be in the history of my community but i did say, did want to point out that i feel like this memoir is lacking in its recognition of people of color who contributed to the movement like it mentions it very briefly but i want more character not character study but i want more i want to know more about just like our black and brown activists so yeah uh if you have any recommendations for me that go along the lines of memoirs from people of color who are queer please please, please link them below for me. I would really, really appreciate it. I really want to learn more. I've only read some stuff from Audrey Lourdes, so yeah, I haven't read it enough, essentially. Anyway, then I read If We Were Villains by Emma L. Rio. I just did a review on this. I ended up giving it five out of five stars. This is a canvas novel that explores the effects of high pressure environments on young people especially when these young people are becoming characters that are not who they are inherently and it also explores that line of when one is play acting versus when one is oneself and do these blur um and it's also a good commentary on madness and can anyone go mad and what would it take to push someone to the brink and lastly, the last book I read this month was, or last month because we're in July now, was The Trouble of Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. And here again, we have another rural community, but this time it is in the um, in England and it follows the different community members on this one avenue as they have one of their um, community members goes missing and there is gossip that was pre-existing within the community that gets further proliferated 
and I don't know, it's reminded me very much of the summer that melted everything because that also follows a very hot summer and a rural community where gossip create has its own myth myth around it and how that myth making can have such a toxic reaction and I do want to do a separate review on this which is why I don't want to go into details but I gave it four out of five stars I thought I might give it five out of five stars and it could be another one of my favorite books of 2017 but I realized that I just didn't attach as much I thought I would but anyway that's another story <laughs> So that is what I read for the month of June. Not so great, I must say, but I don't know. I guess I can continue to have these not so great reading months. Well, what did you read? Please let me know. What was your favorite book of this month? Do you have any recommendations for me? If so, please recommend below. I'm always looking for new stuff to read. Even though I know my TBR is out of control, don't look at my Goodreads TBR, it's terrible. I hope you are all well and that there is a moment of laughter in your upcoming week. So yeah, take care.